So we have this weird monster thing, you've maybe seen it in a previous tutorial of mine, uh, moving around here. And you might think, what's so special about that? You've made tutorials about moving characters and AI stuff before. Uh, the difference here is this one is moving along a spline, and we can put any actor we want on this spline. So if I, for instance, say, oh, let's actually put this one on here, now we have that. I don't want that, so let's not do that and just put you back over where you belong, but we can put any actor we want on this. So if we, for instance, have an actor that's, uh, I don't know, a turret that's shooting at the player or something like that, right? We can have it moving over this spline and still be a functioning actor in its own right. Luckily, it's a really easy thing to make. So let's get into it. Starting by making a blueprint class, uh, let's make a normal actor and call it uh, spline movement. Uh, call it whatever you want, really. Then when we open that up, the first thing you want to do is add a new spline component because of course we're making a spline here so that just makes sense in the event graph uh we don't particularly need the uh, begin overlap or event tick so just delete those but instead make a new custom event of your own and uh, call it something like play timeline because that's what we're gonna do with it we're gonna play a timeline and that one is going to run on event begin play, so uh, play timeline. And it might not surprise you that play timeline, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a timeline. But instead of it uh, being hooked up into play, we're going to disconnect that and we're going to hook it up into play from start, just to be sure. We never want to play from any other place other than from the very start. Opening up our timeline itself, we can add a track, uh, a flow track to be specific. Uh, we can set the length to one and we can use last keyframe if you want instead i generally just do both just to be sure that i don't miss anything uh set the time and value of a first key to zero and zero then add a second key and set the time and value both to one now we're going to add a loop node this will give an output going from the value a to value b based on the alpha the alpha will be the output from our timeline and we're going to have to get a value b so let's get our spline and get number of spline points we're going to subtract one from that i'll explain why in a second we're then going to get distance at spline point and get the result of our subtracted number of spline points into the point index the reason we did the minus one after the uh, get number of spline points is get number of spline points gives you a number that starts counting at one. So if you have two spline points, it will say you have two spline points. But get distance along spline works based on an index value and indexes start at zero. So if you have two spline points, they will be called index zero and one. If you then hook up two into that, it's going to start looking up an index that doesn't exist. So by subtracting one from the number of spline points, we'll get what we need out of this node. And then the output of that node can go into the B of the loop. So now it will loop between zero and the distance at the last spline point. Taking another reference to that spline, uh, we get location at distance along spline. And we use the return value from the loop to go into that and we set the coordinate space to be in world space. Now, finally, back at our timeline, out of the update pin, we're going to uh, set actor location, and that location will be the location at distance along spline. So take the output from that into new location. But as it is right now, it will influence the location of the actor itself, and we want to influence another actor. Well, luckily, that's not that complicated. We can just add a new variable, uh, call it something like actor, and the variable type will be a actor. So actor, object reference, and we make that a public one because we want to be able to influence it from the editor. We drag that in, and that'll be the target of our actor location. Dragging over that actor again, we're also going to set actor rotation because we want the actor that's moving along the spline to also face the direction that it's moving. Otherwise, it's just going to look a little weird. So we also uh, set the rotation and we do something very similar to that. From the spline, we're going to pull out again and we're going to get tangent at distance along spline. We're going to set that to world space, use the output of the loop to get that into uh, the distance here 
And then you might think that's a yellow pin, that's a bluish pin, surely that's not gonna work. Both of these are vector three values. So this is a vector three and this is a rotator, but both of them are made up of three values. So if you just drag one into the other, Unreal is very nice and friendly for you, and it'll just add in a converter node from one type to the other. Doesn't work for every single type of variable to every other type of variable, but from a vector to a rotator, you can just do that. Now, this system will move your selected actor over the entire spline every uh, single time within one second. We don't really want that. So let's go back here and uh, after event begin play, but before play timeline, we're going to drag in a reference to our timeline, hold the control, dragging it into the event and graph, uh, and we're going to set play rate. Connect those up and it's time to make another variable again. So let's make a timeline length and we're going to make that a float type variable. Uh, by default, let's set this to like five, uh, because otherwise you, you never want to have a timeline that's zero seconds long, because that's just kind of weird. And we're going to drag the timeline length into here. We're going to add a division node, and the timeline length is going to go into the bottom. The top is going to be one, and the answer is going to go into new rate. Whatever number we put into this variable is going to be the length in seconds of our timeline. So if we put in 60 here, the timeline is going to take a minute. But of course, we want to be able to do that on a per actor basis. So let's also um, enable public variable for that one. And then we just need to make sure that after the timeline finishes, we uh, play timeline again so that it loops. Now, one last quality of live improvement is you can go into the construction script. You can drag in a reference to your spline there as well. You can uh, get location at spline point. Set it to world location. And you can get a reference to your actor. Set actor location. Hook the location up into uh, that node and then somehow <laughs> where there's room hook that up into the construction script so that we can actually within the editor when uh when we select the actor that we want to have on our spline it'll automatically just put it on the beginning of our spline so if we now put this into the world and say uh make a quick little copy of this actor over here and we uh, we make a spline that goes around a bit. So if you have a spline point selected and you hold Alt while dragging it out, it'll make a new spline point for you. So let's maybe have this go up a little, maybe this one as well, just for demonstration purposes. And then we have this one go that way and down a little. Then this one goes over there. And then the last spline point, of course, you're going to want to have it line up with your first one. And if you're going to do that manually, you're going to be in for a really, really bad time. So let me show you a good way to do that. While you have your spline movement actor selected, you can select the specific spline component. And then you can go to uh, select first spline point. That should have a location of 000. zero, zero. If you mess around with it a little bit, it might not. So you can just right click on it and copy and then go to select last spline point and you can right click and paste. This way they will line up at least in location. In uh, rotation, they might not. That's a little bit more tricky to uh, to figure out. But generally speaking, if you just mess around with the, uh, with the spline points that exist, before and after the final one, you can get them to match up pretty well. As long as it looks as one continuous line from most angles, it probably should be fine. So at this point, we literally just go to this uh, picker icon over here, and we can say, I want that actor. It plays on the spline for us. Uh, let's make it a little bit smaller, just because it'll look nicer that way. And now when we play, you can see our actor is moving along the spline that we've made. And it's really as easy as that. And let's put this one out the way. <laughs> um, and there we go. Now, you can do a lot more fancy stuff with this. You can procedurally also like generate meshes uh, around your spline 
uh, so you have an automatically generated track if you want to have like a minecart track that works that way this is just the very basics of what you can do with splines we might get into some more interesting procedural mesh generation around that kind of stuff to improve a system like this in the future but for right now uh, don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you all back next uh, time with a new tutorial